Expand your vocabulary with our Core 2000 Words eBook. Wow. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Wow. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Swahili eBook before it's gone. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, 
you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Sherehe ya siku kuu ya mwaka mpya wa Kiislamu huwakumbusha wafuasi wa dini wa Kiislamu wakati Nabi Muhammad alihama kutoka Mecca kuelekea Medina. Wakati huu unajulikana kama mwaka wa hegira. Waumini huswali kusoma Quran na kujirudia kwa utulivu kuhusu hegira. Tarehe ya kusherehekea siku kuu hii huwa tofauti kila mwaka. Fundisho hili itakufanya kujua jinsi waislamu nchini Kenya kusherehekea siku kuu hii. Je, unajua mwezi wa kwanza wa mwaka wa Kiislamu unaitwaje? Tutaonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni mwa video hii. Waislamu hutumia na kadi za mwaka mpya wa Kiislamu na kutakia na kila laheri. Wao huenda kwa msikiti na kukariri Quran takatifu pamoja na kuswali. Ibada hii huongozwa na imam. Mwaka mpya huongojewa kwa hamu. Watu wengine hukaa msikitini hadi usiku wa manane. Waislamu hufunga kukula na kunywa mchana katika siku za tisa, kumi na kumi na moja ya Muharram. Wakati huu, misikiti upeana mlo wa bure wakati wa usiku. Waislamu huungana kwa vikundi vikubwa kama njia ya kuhusika katika kufanya jambo la busara kama vile kusafisha njia za miji na kuandaa michezo kama mojawapo ya njia ya kusherehekea. Waislamu hukusanyika pamoja na kutembea kwa mwendo wa kijeshi wakati wa usiku ili kukaribisha mwaka mpya. Wao huimba nyimbo za kumsifu Mungu wakiwa wamevalia nguo za kale. Hawana ruhusa ya kuongea, kula ama kunywa wakati wa safari yao. Kusudio lao la kutembea kwa unyamavu ni kutaka kuatia watu moyo kwa kuswali na kumshukuru ala kwa kuwalinda na kuwapa fanaka. Waislamu wengine hupeana sadaka ya chakula ili kushukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa mapato yao. Sikukuu ya Kiislamu ya mwaka mpya sio sikukuu ya kitaifa nchini Kenya, lakini biashara na makampuni za Kiislamu zinaweza kosa kufunguliwa. Kuna uwezekano wa msukumano kwa misikiti hasa jioni na usiku. Na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali. Je, unajua mwezi wa kwanza wa mwaka wa Kiislamu unaitwaje? Mwezi wa kwanza wa Kiislamu unaitwa Muharram. Mwaka huu una miezi 12 na siku 354 kinyume na mwaka wa kawaida ulio na siku 364 na robo. Funzo hili lilikuwaje? Je, ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, kulingana na dini za nchi yako, kuna siku kungapi za mwaka mpya za kidini na sizizo za kidini? Tuachie maoni yako katika swahili podwano1.com kisha tuonane katika somo lifuatalo. Kwa heri. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Siku kuu ya Diwali inayomaanisha sherehe ya mwangaza, kusherehekewa kushangilia ushindi wa uzuri dhidi ya ubaya. 
siku hii ambayo husherekewa katikati ya mwezi wa Oktoba au Novemba inatambulika na Wahindi kote duniani Kenya ikiwa moja wapo Diwali ni siku kuu ya kitaifa nchini Kenya Video hii itakufanya kujua kuhusu sherehe za Diwali nchini Kenya Je uko na dokezo lolote la kuwa ni dini gani ama watu wapi ambao husherekea Diwali Tutaonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni mwa video hii. Watu hununua bidhaa za sherehe za Diwali. Bidhaa hizi ni vyombo vya jikoni na madoido kadhaa kama vile Diwali mithai na zinginezo. Wao huvaa nguo mpya na kudumisha usafi wa hali ya juu. Wahindi pia huoka sweeti, kumbwe na chakula zingine kama sadaka za Diwali kama ilivyo desturi. Marafiki na jamaa hualikwa kwa chakula na baadaye au hubadilishana zawadi, hucheza michezo tofauti na pia hucheza ngoma. Watu huosha nyumba zao na pahala pa kazi kwa kina. Nguo, nyumba vyote husafishwa na takataka zote kutupwa nje. Tambiko la kujitakasa hufanyika ili kutoa vitu zote zisizohitajika kwa mazingira ili kuashiria ya kuwa mtu yuko tayari kupokea miungu. Watu hufanya michoro ya miungu kwa unga wa mchele na unga mwekundu kama ishara ya kuwa miungu wamekaribishwa. Siku hii watu hurembesha milango kwa nyumba zao ama biashara na mikeka ya zamani yenye rangi ya kupendeza ama michoro ya rangoli. Usiku ifikapo tandogo za mafuta huwashwa dias na kuwekwa kila mahali. Ta zote za umeme na mishumaa huwashwa na fataka hurushwa kwa hewa ili kufukuza ubaya kutoka kwa mazingira yako. Ta hizi huashiria kujua au elimu inayoleta amani na kuondoa ujinga na giza maishani. Wakati wa sherehe za Diwali, wanawake huvalia mapambo ya thamani kuu pamoja na sari ama salwa kuta. Wanaume nao huvaa kutas na kuonekana wakiwa maridadi sana. Na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali. Je, uko na dokezo lolote la kuwa ni dini gani ama watu wapi ambao husherekea Diwali? Hata ingawa siku ya Diwali inahusishwa sana na dini ya Kihindi, kuna dini zingine ambazo huitambua. Nazo ni kama Ubuddha, Ujaini na Usihi. Hata hivyo, kuna waumini wachache sana wa dini za Ujaini na Usihi. Funzo hili lilikuwaje? Je, je Ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, kuna wahindi njini mwenu na kama wako wao usherekea siku kuu ya Diwali? Tuachie maoni yako katika Swahili podwano1.com kisha tuonane katika somo lifuatalo. Kwa heri. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Wa Kenya husherekea wiki ya mtindo ya nguo kwa kuonyesha mitindo mizuri kutoka kwa michoro ya kisasa na ya kitamaduni. Mitindo hii huundwa na wachoraji wa bunifu ambao huchukua fursa hii kuonyesha ubunifu wao. Waandalizi hubadilisha tarehe za tamasha hii kila mwaka. Katika video hii utajua jinsi wa Kenya husherekea wiki ya mitindo. J Unajua tukio hili limekuwa na majina ngani? Tutaonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni mwa video hii. Tukio hili ambalo hufanyika jijini Nairobi huwapea nafasi waundaji wa mitindo kutoka Kenya na nchi za kigeni kutakabari mikusanyiko mipya ya mitindo kwa njia ya maonyesho. Wanunuzi na wanahabari hukagua mitindo hii na kuitafutia soko. Wakati huu ndio watu hujua ni mitindo ipi ipo kwa nyakati fulani. Katika wiki ya mitindo nchini Kenya, matendo yanahusika na uundaji halisi wa hapa nchini na wa kimataifa ufanyika. Anwani za hali ya juu, wafadhili na wanahabari hufuatwa kwa makini kila kitu kinachoendelea kwa tukio hili. Wafadhili sana sana huwa na alama za biashara ya mashirika makubwa ya kimataifa. Chakula cha jioni cha mkeka mwekundu huandaliwa na karamu ya kufana mno hufanyika. Wakati huu waundaji wa mitindo hupata nwani za wanunuzi au watu wanaweza kuinunua biashara. 
waliohudhuria hupata burudani na maonyesho ya bidhaa na huduma ya kifahari za kuinua maisha. Sikukuu hii huwa na nia ya kuifanya Kenya kuwa mji mkuu wa mitindo ya kimaisha barani Afrika. Watu wanaotaka kuinua biashara ya waundaji wa Kenya hufanikiwa kwa vile mashindano haya ni bunifu. Na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali. Je, unajua tukio hili limekuwa na majina yapi? Wiki ya mitindo ya Kenya ilianza kwa majina tofauti. Kwanza ilikuwa ikiitwa sherehe ya mwelekeo wa mitindo ya Kenya. Ikaitwa ukio na lopendwa sana la mitindo katika sehemu ndogo ya Sahara barani Afrika. Halafu ikaitwa mtoto wa akili ya Son Sharma. Na sasa hivi inaitwa wiki ya mtindo ya Kenya. Fuzo hili lilikuwaje? Je, ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, kuna sherehe za aina hii nchini mwenu ambazo huweza kusaidia waundaji wa mitindo kupata soko na kuvutia watalii? Tuachie maoni yako katika swahili podwano1.com kisha tuonane katika somo lifuatalo. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Sikukuu ya lamu ya kusherekea utamaduni ilianzishwa mwaka wa elfu mbili na moja ili kushangilia urithi wa kipekee wa kiswahili wafungu visiwa mjini Lamu. Sherehe hizi hutendeka kwa siku tatu kila mwaka lakini kila mwaka una nyakati tofauti. Hata hivyo, sherehe hizi hufanyika sana mwezi wa Oktoba na Novemba. Kupitia funzo hili, utajua jinsi siku kuu ya Lamu ya kusherehekea utamaduni inasherekewa nchini Kenya. Je Unafahamu ni kwa nini mji wa Lamu unapatikana katika orodha ya tamaduni za dunia? Tuonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni mwa video hii. Katika sherehe hizi, ngoma hupigwa, nyimbo za kitamaduni huchezwa na watu hukatika huku wakivalia mavazi za kimila. Bidhaa vya vipekee vya kuundwa kwa mikono huonyeshwa ambazo ni mikeka ya sakafu na ya mezani, vitu vya kuwekwa mapambo na vyombo vingine ndogo ndogo. Madoido ya kuwekwa kwa ukuta za nyumba na hata sahani za kuchaguliwa chakula na zingine zingi. Waandalizi wa sherehe hizi hutayarisha mashindano kwa maji na pia kwa nchi kavu. Mashindano ya mchezo wa bao ikipendwa na wengi. Bao ni mchezo wa Waswahili ambao hutumia kipande cha mbao na changarawe na huwavutia watu kutoka ndani na nje ya nchi. Michezo nyingine ni ya mashindano ya punda na mashindano ya jahazi. Katika sherehe hizi kuna maonyesho ya ukaridi wa mashairi ya Kiswahili. Waswahili pia wanapenda kujichora na hena kwa mikono na miguu ili kujirembesha, haswa wanapojiandaa kufanya harusi. Katika tamasha hizi, sherehe za harusi na miziki ya Waswahili hufurahisha wageni sana. Mji wa Lamu hutumika kuandaa sherehe ya Kiislamu ya Maulidi ambayo ni siku kuu mjini Lamu ya kusherekea utamaduni. Pia kuna sherehe ya wapaka rangi wa kila mwaka kutoka kote duniani. Na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali. Je, unafahamu ni kwa nini mji wa Lamu unapatikana katika orodha ya tamaduni za dunia? Kwa sababu ya kuwepo kwa fungu visiwa kwa Lamu inayopatikana katika orodha maarufu. Lamu lipo katika bahari Hindi kaskazini mwa Kenya. Lamu lipo mahali pengine pa historia za kina. Utamaduni na historia za waswahili huonekana dhahiri kupitia mahali hapa. Funzo hili lilikuwaje? Je, ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, nchini mwenu kuna sherehe za utamaduni na kama ndiyo, unapenda kuhudhuria kujionea mwenyewe? Tuachie maoni yako katika swahili podwano1.com kisha tunane katika somo lifuatalo. Waheri. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Siku kuu ya mziki nchini Kenya hufanyika jijini Nairobi katika jumba kuu la mikutano la kimataifa la Kenyatta 
lililoko katika barabara ya Harambe. Tamasha hii hutendeka mwezi wa nane wa kila mwaka wakati ambapo sekta ya burudani huvuma sana. Wachezaji mziki tofauti hujitokeza na vile vile mashabiki wao. Somo hili litakujulisha jinsi wa Kenya usherekea siku hii ya mziki. Je, unajua fadhili wa kuwa tamasha hili ni ya kina nani? Tutaonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni mwa video hii. Wizara ya mambo ya kinyumbani na urithi wa nchi huandaa sherehe za mziki wa kinyumbani ambapo hakuna uhusiano wowote na mashule, vitengo vya serikali na vilabu vya nyumbani mashirika ya kiserikali ndio wahusika wakuu wa tukio hili wao huandaa dansi za kitamaduni mziki wa kale na pia sarakasi mabingwa wa muziki kutoka shule za msingi upili na vyo vikuu kutoka sehemu mbalimbali nchini hufanya vitengo kadhaa za muziki na dansi vitengo hizi ni kama kipande cha usanii cha kujitungia nyimbo za kale nyimbo za pamoja ama kwaya na vipande asili za muziki tukio hili la wanafunzi huwa limetayarishwa na Wizara ya Elimu nchini. Washindi katika tamasha hii hufanya maonyesho ya usanii wao mbele ya Rais wa Kenya katika ikulu. Kazi yao hutuzwa taji ya kwaya ya mwaka ya utamaduni nchini Kenya na hualikwa kutumbuiza umati kila wakati kuna sherehe za siku kuu ya kitaifa. Wakati wa tamasha hii ya mziki wa Kenya, chakula cha asili kutoka kabila au kundi tofauti nchini Kenya huonyeshwa. Mikahawa tofauti pia hufanya maonyesho ya chakula cha kimataifa kinachotambulika ili kwenda pamoja na mziki. Na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali. Je, unajua fadhili wa kuwa tamasha hili ni ya kina nani? Wizara ya Elimu pamoja na Wizara ya Mambo ya Nyumbani na Urithi wa Kitaifa ndio wafadhili wakuu wa tamasha hili. Kama tunavyoona katika maelezo haya, serikali husika kwa njia kubwa hata ingawa mashirika ya kibinafsi pia husika. Funzo hili lilikuwaje? Je, ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, kuna tamasha kama hili la kila mwaka nchini mwenu? Tuachie maoni yako katika swahili podwano1.com kisha tunane katika somo lifuatalo. Kwa heri. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Siku kuu ya kimataifa ya maonyesho ya biashara Kenya hufanyika nyakati tofauti kila mwaka. Siku hii ni nafasi njema inayotumiwa na mashirika ya humu nchini na yale ya kimataifa kujiinua kibiashara. Maonyesho haya hufanyika katika jumba kuu la mikutano la kimataifa la Kenyatta. Kupitia video hii utaelemika kuhusu kinachotendeka katika maonyesho haya. Je, unajua ni bidhaa zipi hupatikana kwa wingi sana katika maonyesho haya? Tutaonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni mwa video hii. Katika maonyesho haya, bidhaa za sekta nyingi hukusanyika hapa. Soko la Afrika Mashariki ikiwamo na vyombo tofauti na mashine pia hukusanywa. Zaidi ya wanabiashara na hamsini hutandaza vitu vyao mahala pakubwa kupita mita elfu tatu. Baada ya kila sehemu ya maonyesho, karamu huandaliwa ili kuwasaidia waonyeshaji kuongea na kujuana na wenzao ambao hukuja kutoka nchi mbalimbali kuona bidhaa hizi. Ushirikiano wa kudumu wa kibiashara hutengenezwa. Waliohudhuria hubadilishana anwani, namba za simu na hupata kugundua jinsi wanavyoweza kufanya biashara pamoja. Wasio kuwa na ujuzi hupata kuwa wajuzi kupitia shughuli hii. Ni ya moja ya siku kuu ya kimataifa ya maonyesho ya biashara nchini Kenya ni kuwaleta pamoja wanunuzi na uzaji wa bidhaa na huduma tofauti. Maonyesho haya huvutia waundaji wakuu katika sekta zao pamoja na wanunuzi wa maana sana. Kutoka idara ya hoteli na mikahawa, washikandao wote hupata fursa ya kuonyesha miundo yao ya kipekee na ubunifu mpya. 
wageni wanaohudhuria ni mameneja wakuu, wanunuzi, wakilishi wa serikali na washauri. Na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali. Je, unajua ni bidhaa zipi hupatikana kwa wingi sana katika maonyesho haya? Baadhi ya bidhaa ambazo hupatikana kwa wingi ni kama vile bidhaa za stima, za ujenzi, za vitambaa, za nguo, za teknolojia, za afya na hata maelezo ya kupika chakula tofauti. Fuzo hili lilikuaje? Je, ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, nchini mwako kuna maonyesho ya kibiashara kama haya? Tuachie maoni yako katika swahili podwano1.com. Kwa heri. Want to transform your driving time into language learning time? How much time do you spend in your car every day? 30 minutes? More than an hour? Why not put this huge amount of time to good use? Instead of just listening to the radio during your daily commute, you could be learning a new language instead. Here are three easy methods for learning a language in your car. You can put them to use right away with the help of our language learning program. First, you can listen to fun audio lessons by real teachers. Listening to lessons while in the car allows you to focus on the road as you listen and learn. In every one of our 3 to 15 minute lessons, our teachers teach you conversations, new phrases, and cultural points. Audio is the only learning medium that lets you learn and drive safely at the same time. So take advantage of all our audio lessons available. Second, you can set your lessons on autoplay and go hands-free. Our autoplay feature lets you keep your hands on the wheel without even reaching for your device. Just set your lessons to autoplay one by one with our Innovative Language 101 app and never have to interrupt your focus on driving to switch to a new lesson. Third, you can repeat out loud and speak from your very first lesson. You want to speak a new language too, right? Well, you'll start learning conversations minutes into your lessons. All you have to do is listen and repeat out loud. Our teachers take you step by step through all of the words, phrases, translations, and grammar points. You're even prompted to speak out loud and repeat. The result? You understand it all and can speak your new language. Turn your commute into language learning time and have fun at the same time. Learning doesn't have to be a big commitment, like signing up for a college class. It can be fun and easy. In fact, it's as easy as pressing play. Our language learning programs will do the work for you. And with the exposure you get while driving on your daily commute, you'll be speaking and understanding real life language quickly. The best part? You can finally learn without even changing your schedule. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Shukran kwa kuungana na mimi katika kipindi hii. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Thank you for joining me. In this series, you're going to learn basic Swahili expressions. It's super easy, and it only takes three minutes. And in this first lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swahili. You learn both an informal and formal way to do it. But unlike many other languages, there is not a very big difference between informal and formal speech in Swahili. First, let's see how Kenyan people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hi, I'm Medina. Nice to meet you. Ha ba ri. Mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Let's break it down. Start with the greeting. Habari. Then mimi ni, which is followed by your name. Next, say the phrase Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. All together It is habari 
Mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And now, let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Shikamo. Jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hello. My name is Medina Maraka. Nice to meet you. Shikamo. Jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at these together. It's important to note that habari can be used in both casual and formal settings. However, it is more formal and respectful to use the word shikamo, especially when addressing an older person. Shikamo implies good day or simply hello. You will notice that the section mimi ni for I am changes to jina langu ni Medina for my name is Medina. During a formal self-introduction, it is advisable to mention your last name. So, I will say, my name is Medina Maraka. Here, you will say your full name. Finally, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe is the same for both. This phrase means, nice to meet you. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Swahili is, habari, mimi ni Medina, nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And the formal way to introduce yourself is Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka, nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When introducing yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Usually, the right hand is slightly supported by the left hand. If you're concerned about politeness, a slight bend forward while shaking the hand adds a sign of respect in the Kenyan business world. However, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Kenya, simplicity is best. Do you know how to say thank you in Swahili? You learn how to say this and many other words in the next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Thanks for dropping by and see you next time. Kwa heri, tunane tena. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners when we thank people. Are you ready? Let's get started. There are several ways to thank someone, but let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Asante. Asante. As you may have guessed, asante means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add the word sana. Asante sana. Asante sana. Sana means a lot. So, asante sana is just like saying thank you very much. In the last lesson, we talked about the informal and formal ways of speaking Swahili. But asante will work in both situations, so there's no need to worry. So how do you reply to thank you in Swahili? It's easy. There are two ways of doing it. The main way is to say, Karibu. This means, you're welcome. Karibu. Literally, this phrase means, welcome. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression, Kamwe. Kamwe. Literally, this phrase means, not at all, or never mind. You use this when you think that there's no need to be thanked. So it's like saying, don't mention it. So when someone says asante to you, you can simply reply with karibu or kamwe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use asante or asante sana, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Asante can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. Do you know what habari means? 
In our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu lesson, you learn this and other greetings in Swahili. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying Asante. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Kenya. Uko tayari? Are you ready? Tuanze! So let's get started. The most commonly used informal greeting is Habari. Habari. Habari means hi or hello. We use it when we meet people. We can use this greeting with friends or relatives, but also with people we don't know. We used this phrase in lesson one. Do you remember? And do you remember what the formal way of greeting people is? Shikamo. Shikamo. Do you also remember that habari can be used both in formal and casual settings? During the evening, we say, habari ya jioni. Habari ya jioni. Jioni is Swahili for evening. So, habari ya jioni means good evening. Habari and habari ya jioni are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these greetings again. Instead, when living in both formal and informal situations, Kenyan people say, Kwaheri. Kwaheri. Kwaheri means goodbye. Finally, in Swahili, we have an expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. Tuonane tena. Tuonane tena. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Swahili. Let's review them all again. When greeting someone in an informal way, remember to say habari. When greeting someone in a formal situation, you say shikamo. When living in either a formal or informal situation, say tuonane tena. It's easy, isn't it? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. In formal situations, Kenyans commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug each other. Don't be afraid to do it with your Kenyan friends. It's normal. In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase unongea kingereza. Do you already know it? I'll be waiting with the answer in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Until then, tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Swahili. Do you remember habari as an informal way of greeting someone? And shikamo, the formal version? In this lesson, you're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Swahili, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Unaongea kingereza? Unaongea kingereza? In Swahili, we sometimes use a one-word phrase that combines the subject and its verb. Unongea is a good example. Breaking this phrase down further, we have u, which is a pronoun for the subject. Na shows the subject's potential of doing an action. It makes the statement affirmative. Ongea is the verb for speak. Together, we have unongea, which literally means you speak. Saying it with a higher intonation makes it a question. So. Unongea means, do you speak? Adding kingereza, the word for English, will make it unongea kingereza. This means, do you speak English? Altogether we have 
Unaongea Kiingereza? Unaongea Kiingereza? To learn how to properly construct one word sentences, check out our obsolete beginner series at swahilipod101.com. There, you'll find several detailed grammar lessons. We are now going to make this sentence formal. It isn't hard. First, add the word J at the beginning of the sentence. J is a word that prompts a question. The sentence, unaongea, will change to J, unaweza ongea. Not the extra word weza, which means able. J, unaweza ongea, therefore means, are you able to? Let's look at the full sentence. J, unaweza ongea, kingereza. Do you speak English? J, unaweza ongea, kingereza. Adding samahani, which means excuse me, makes the sentence even more polite. Samahani, unaweza ongea kingereza? The responses you'll receive could be one of these three. Ndiyo. Yes. Ndiyo. Kidogo. A little. Kidogo. La, siongei kingereza? No, I don't speak English. La, siongei kingereza? Since la siongei kingereza is a negative statement, we need to say la first, followed by si before the verb, and an e at the end of the verb. Also note that the verb ongei is slightly different from ongea. This is because negating in Swahili depends on the pronoun and the tense. In this example, the first person prefix si is used before the verb, and the suffix e is used at the end of the verb. As you can see, negation in Swahili follows a particular pattern. Some negations, though, require the word no, but we will talk about this in a later lesson. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. For those of you who speak languages other than English, this question still works. Just substitute Kingereza with a different language. Here are some examples. Kitalia is Italian. Kirusi is Russian. Hispania is Spanish. And Kijerumani is German. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression samahani, but did you know that this can also be used as an apology? We'll be learning this in the next lesson, as well as other ways to apologize in Swahili. It's never too late to show your good manners to Kenyans. So, I'll see you in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. See you next time. Koheri, chonani tena. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, unaweza ongea kingereza? Do you speak English? We also mentioned the word samahani, which means excuse me in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use samahani and other words when apologizing in Swahili. We should use samahani in formal situations, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, samahani, naweza agiza kikombe cha kahawa? Excuse me, would I order a cup of coffee? We can also use it when asking a question. For example, samahani, Mombasa iko wapi? Excuse me, where is Mombasa? Sometimes, we also hear people say just samahani because it can also be used to draw someone's attention. Samahani. Samahani can be used in formal and informal situations. We can use samahani when asking a question or when apologizing. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I am sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is niwi eradi. It means pardon me and can be used in both formal and informal situations. Niwi eradi. First, we have the Swahili word niwie, which means a consideration. Then, radhi, meaning pardon. Together, it literally means consider a pardon. But you can think of it like, pardon me. Niwie radhi. Niwie radhi. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Please, remember when you're in Kenya, if you accidentally bump into someone, it's more common to say samahani than niwie radhi. Are you able to count in Swahili? 
In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Swahili from 1 to 10. I'll be waiting for you in our next Swahili kwa dakika tatu lesson. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. This lesson will be all about nambari. That's right, that means numbers. First, we'll learn the numbers from 1 to 10. They're not difficult at all, and this lesson will only take 3 minutes. Kwa dakika tatu, two. Are you ready? Let's start. Moja. Moja. Mbili. Mbili. Tatu. Tatu. Nne. Nne. Tano. Tano. Sita. Sita. Saba. Saba. Nane. Nane. Tisa. Tisa. Kumi. Kumi. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Moja. Mbili. Tatu, nne, tano, sita, saba, nane, tisa, kumi. Great job! If you're wondering what comes before moja, namely zero, it is sufuri in Swahili. Sufuri. It's quite easy to remember, right? Now, there's no need to panic if your new Kenyan friend asks for your cell phone number. Let's practice how you'll say it. We'll use the phrase, Nambari yangu ni, which means, my number is. Nambari yangu ni. Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, Sita Tano. Can you read it by yourself? Sufuri Saba Mbili Tatu Nne Nane Saba Tisa Sita Tano. Perfect. Now it's time for Medina's insights. Kenyans consistently pronounce these numbers as they appear, so it's easy to master them. These numbers are used to name other bigger numbers, so this saves you the energy of having to start over again. Keep at it, because the advantages of mastering these first 10 numbers will become clear as we continue our lessons. Do you know the Swahili word for 100? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers 11 to 100 in Swahili. Before jumping in, be sure to practice the numbers we learned in this lesson, from moja to kumi. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers 1 to 10. Do you still remember? Let's go through them once more. Moja, mbili, tatu, nne, tano, sita, saba, nane, tisa, kumi. And now, let's continue from 11. Kumi na moja. Kumi na moja. Kumi na mbili. Kumi 
na mbili. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na nne. Kumi na nne. Kumi na tano. Kumi na tano. Kumi na sita. Kumi na sita. Kumi na saba. Kumi na saba. Kumi na nane. Kumi na nane. Kumi na tisa. Kumi na tisa. Okay. Now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Kumi na moja. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na nne. Kumi na tano. Kumi na sita. Kumi na saba. Kumi na nane. Kumi na tisa. These numbers might seem long and a little difficult, but the idea is actually very simple. Just take kumi and add any one of the numbers between 0 and 10 that you learned in the previous lesson. Let's take a look at 11. Kumi na moja. Kumi is 10. Join it with moja, 1, using na. Together we have kumi na moja. Kumi na moja. You can do the same with other numbers. Now, do you realize the advantage of mastering the first numbers you learned in the previous lesson? Moving on. 20 and other multiples of 10 take different names. Let's go through them. Ishirini. Ishirini. Thelathini. Thelathini. Arobaini. Arobaini. Hamsini. Hamsini. Sitini. Sitini. Sabini. Sabini. Themanini. Themanini. Tisini. Tisini. And lastly, Mia Moja. Mia Moja. All these numbers take a ni at the end, except for Mia, meaning hundred. This is an easy way to remember these numbers. The last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Check the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the first lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say 38 in Swahili? Let's take it step by step. 30 is telathini and then add 8, nane. In between telathini and nane is the conjunction na, meaning and. To join them. Thelathini na nane. It's as simple as that. Let's try another one, like 72. First, take 70, Sabini, and then add 2, Bili, to get Sabini na Bili. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When you want to come beyond 100, you can use the same basic logic as with the numbers above 10. Just add the word mia moja, 100, in front of the tens. For example, 167 is mia moja sitini na saba. Mia moja sitini na saba. The next time you have trouble sleeping, try counting sheep in Swahili and see how far you can get. Would you like to go on a shopping trip in Kenya? In the next lesson, we'll get to practice the numbers by talking about prizes. I'll be waiting for you in the next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu lesson. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Swahili. Can you remember the numbers from moja to mia moja? I hope so, because this time 
you will put them into use. We will be practicing how to go shopping in Kenya. Before we start, you need to know how to say, how much is this? Hi ni pesa ngapi? Hi ni pesa ngapi? Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Imagine you're in a shop in Kenya. You find something you want to buy and you want to ask how much it costs. Start by saying, Samahani. Do you remember what this means? Excuse me. Samahani, hi ni pesa ngapi? Samahani, hi ni pesa ngapi? The clerk will tell you, ni shilingi? It costs. Or more simply, they'll say the amount directly. For example, ishirini natano. What number is ishirini natano? Can you work it out? It's 25. So this phrase means it cost 25 shillings. Let's look at some more examples. Say, you see a bag that you want to buy. A bag in Swahili is beggy. So how would you ask how much it costs? Samahani, beggy hi ni pesa ngapi? Or a pair of shoes. This makes it slightly different because you have to use the plural form. A shoe will be kiatu, but the plural for shoes is viatu. So you would ask the following question. Samahani, viatu hivi ni pesa ngapi? This simply means, how much are these shoes? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Credit and debit cards are not commonly used in Kenya, but you can double check by asking the following question. Now, is a lipa kwa kadia credit? Can I pay by credit card? Now, where's a lipa kwa kadia credit? Do you feel confident about counting shillings? If you don't, don't worry. We'll learn all about it next time. I'll be waiting for you in the next Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu lesson. Tuanane! Jamboni, Mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, Hi ni pesa ngapi? How much is this? Now, we learn how to answer this question by counting shillings in Swahili. Let's learn how to say prices in Swahili. Try to say nine shillings. Shilingi tisa. Shilingi tisa. Kenya uses the Kenyan shilling. The coins used include one, five, ten, twenty, forty shillings, and a fifty cent coin. While the notes include fifty, one hundred, two hundred, five hundred, and one thousand. In Swahili, the Kenyan shilling is known as shilingi. Most of the prices are stated in whole shilling amounts, as we can see in the following examples. 45 shillings. Shilingi arobaini natano. Shilingi arobaini natano. Are you ready to take a challenge? This one is longer. How would you say 199 shillings? Shilingi miyamoja tisini natisa. Shilingi mia moja tisini na tisa. That was pretty tough, right? But no need to despair. It still follows the same simple rules as we've seen before. But you can make it slightly simpler by leaving out the shillings, just by saying the numbers. Mia moja tisini na tisa. You will probably hear this in shops quite a lot. Now it's time for Medina's insights. Are you wondering why I didn't mention cents? Although the unit of Kenyan currency is made up of 100 cents, the usage of cents is pretty common. The all 50 cent, 10 cent, and 5 cent coins are now rarely used. Most of the prizes are whole shilling amounts. Now you're ready for a shopping spree in Kenya. Want to invite your friends along with you to impress them with your fluent counting in Swahili? 
Learn how to ask your friends about their plans in the next Kiswahili Kwa Dekikata lesson. See you then. Tonane tena. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dekikata the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to talk about shillings. Can you still remember? In this lesson, we'll practice how to talk about your plans and ask others about theirs. For example, if a friend asks you, what are you doing this weekend? Let's get started. If you want to know what your friend is planning to do on the weekend, you can ask, Una mpango gani weekendi? Una mpango gani weekendi? Let's break it down. Una mpango is a declarative one-word statement that means you have a plan. In this word, u is the personal pronoun for you. Na stands for to have, and pango is plan. Gani means what? Can you guess what weekendi means? The pronunciation of this word is a pretty big clue. If you guessed weekend, you're right. So all together we have unampango gani weekendi. It's an easy and commonly used sentence, which is translated as, what are you going to do this weekend? What if you're not asking about this weekend? When you want to ask about another specific time, you just need to replace the word weekendi. Tomorrow is kesho. So you can also say unampango gani kesho, which is, what are you going to do tomorrow? Or you could also put in a weekday, such as Jumatatu on Monday, or Jumamosi, which is on Saturday. Okay, now you know how to ask the question, but how should you answer when someone asks you? Here is one way. Nitaenda kwa cinema. This means, I'll go to the movies. Nitaenda means, I will go. Kwa means, to. Cinema is the easy one. It means, movie theater. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. You have probably noticed that Swahili does not use prepositions in the same way as English. Instead, the one-word sentence mostly summarizes what the preposition might intend to say. However, this is not always the case depending on how it's used in a sentence. This might be a bit confusing at first, but with a little practice, you'll get the hang of it. We will be mentioning examples over the next few lessons, so please, keep them in mind. In this lesson, you learned how to talk about your schedule. Next time, we are going to learn how to use the verb kuwa, which means to be. Do you know how to say your nationality in Swahili? I'll be waiting for you with the answer in the next Swahili Kwa Dakikata to lesson. Tuona netena. Expand your vocabulary with our Core 2000 Words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Swahili ebook before it's gone.